Kraken by Chana Nieville. <laughs> we decided to review this book for our Madness Month. I keep wanting to call it March Madness Month, but it is not it's March. It's May. It's definitely not March. <laughs> it's just Madness Month. Like, fuck it. So the first time I ever came across this book, I was working very long hours, and I read it, and I was like, this was easy. Like, this was totally followable. Like, <laughs> this wasn't strange. That's oh boy. a weird book. Like, very weird. Like, she handed it to me and I started reading it and I was like, the first hundred pages or so were kind of like slow and you're like, what is happening? <laughs> like, because like weird things are kind of going on, but like nobody's telling you anything. And then by the time you like get into the actual plot and like Billy's had a couple of magical encounters, you're like, oh, okay, things are happening now. I like this better. It's kind of like Vast in the Night where it sets up an entire magical world that your main character has no experience with. And that magical world is just chugging along and having like... Do we do thing? anything and the main character just kind of falls into it and has to figure out everything. So main character is Billy. He is a curator at the London Museum of Natural History. He's good at bottling things like mollusks. His thing is mollusks and so he helped bottle this gigantic squid, the Architeuthis, which he has fondly nicknamed Archie. So one morning Billy is giving the tour to go see Architeuthis and you know it's go he's going through his routine like you know pause here say this build up drama blah de blah man a lot of weird people come and look at this squid blah de blah walks into the room and the squid which takes up the entire room is gone. And <laughs> Billy is just like what the fuck because there is like literally no way this tank could fit out the door like it's just like an impossibility. And so, of course, the police get called, and, you know, Billy is the one question because he's kind of the one closest to the squid, and then the cult squad gets called in. And you don't know they're the cult squad until, like, later on in the book, but basically, it's Baron and Kath Collingwood, and I cannot remember his name. Marty. Marty. They kind of make up this magical cult squad, and they investigate like cults trying to start shit and shut that shit down. Baron is at the beginning of the book he's like super like I am in charge and these are the rules and Kath, Kath Collingswood is just like the young police officer her uniform is always disheveled and she swears like a sailor <laughs> and I love her and Vardy is, is super interesting because he used to be an evangelical Christian but he was also an academic and so he kind of fell out of his faith because like it logically didn't make sense and he just pines for the day that he used to be, you know, a true believer. Like he misses the high of believing in something that fanatically. So he goes and he researches these cults and by researching them he gets like really invested. It's almost like he's converted, gets all the information and then moves on to the next one. Like he just kind of like method acts the cults until he understands them. So he's a great resource for the cult department. <laughs> Billy is also, as he's in this museum, he notices the security guard Dane. He was always kind of a dick to him. Like after the squid appears, he starts kind of like hearing noises and kind of seeing Dane places. And he's like, that's weird. And there's this squirrel standing outside my door and it's just fucking staring at me. What the fuck? And so things are like off. And then at one point, Billy goes back to his job and he goes into the basement and they find a guy in a jar, <laughs> just like a dead guy in a jar that was not there previously. He's just, just like, like, I can't deal with this. <laughs> and so the cult squad, um, Collingswood is actually like a magician because guess what? Magic is mm -hmm. real. So she's a magician. She puts a whole bunch of protective charms. The magic is referred to as knacks and knacking in this book. So she does a bunch of protective things. So like nobody can get in and out like without her knowing. And so Billy is having a rough go of it and his friend Leon comes over and he's going to tell Leon stuff even though he's not supposed to because, you know, secrecy. And Leon brings in this package that was at the front door and he's like, oh, you have mail. And this is about when the book gets like... This is goes, when it picks up. Yeah. It goes from being like kind of weird to like... Wow. Hi there, book. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so they open this package and this man and this small child pop out. Like, unfold <laughs> themselves like origami from this package. Billy's like, what the fuck? And the guy is super fucking creepy. <laughs> super creepy. He, like, okay, so 
he's Goss, he speaks in like almost like fairy tale like he rambles to himself and he kind of like lives in his own fantasy world yeah. in these ramblings like he is in like like he's seeing another dimension that's kind of like this dimension but isn't this dimension like he's just weird and Subi says nothing like he's just this child that's almost like a too. doll Goss unhinges his jaw and just eats Leon right there just cool. he's like you're <laughs> being troublesome goodbye <laughs> and then they they kidnap they kidnap Billy and are taking him somewhere, and so, like, Subi, like, holds him. Yeah. But, like, he, like, if Goss tells him to do something, he does it, but he does not say anything. He, mm -hmm. like, his reactions seem kind of, like, lethargic, almost. Like, he's not really there. Yeah, he has no curiosity yeah. or interest. He never says a word. Um, like, I think one time he's holding a beetle, and he's just holding it or something. Yeah. I don't know. But, like, he, just think of him as, like, a tag along but Goss like has long conversations with Subi and like I think my favorite pet like speech thing from Goss is like where he's talking about Princess Subi <laughs> and the cast is real weird like but like, the guy who reads the audiobook like this is when he shines <laughs> <laughs> but they are taking Billy to meet Tattoo okay so <laughs> You're going tattoo, that's an interesting nickname. It must be like a big guy with tattoos. No, 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 no. This guy is a literal fucking tattoo. On the guy's back. He is a sentient tattoo. And you're going, what? <laughs> and like, he has like all these minions that he's like, he's like altered. Like he finds weak people, like and desperate people, and like, he like, alters them so that like one guy like is like has like radio dials in him and can like get transmissions from outside and then he has his bodyguards which are literal like fist heads <laughs> like they've got like their their hands and their penises are hands apparently too <laughs> who got to figure that part out i don't know but that was not gonna be a fun night like let me tell you it's, it's weird it's, it's real weird it's weird and so he wants to take Billy back into the factory to like modify him and then Dane bursts in with a squirrel yeah. and rescues him and you're just like, what you mean, <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> what is happening? So Dane takes Billy back to his church and like his church is the church of the squid. They yeah. worship the Kraken and you're like, okay, this is weird, but it kind of fits because there's giant squid and, you know, Cthulhu and whatnot. And they're like, we worship the squid and we don't really care that our, our Kraken is stolen. We don't care about that. But you're our prophet, Billy, because you preserved them. And Billy's because, what? And Bi because they tell Billy, like, the fact that you did it lovingly, like, mm -hmm. you cared, like, you put <laughs> it in a natural position. Billy's just like, okay, can I get out of here now? And so... It comes to everybody's attention through the London Mancers, who, like, their magic is through London, like, you can... They can take parts of London and make it into other things, and they can, like, read London, like, they can read the his like, the future through London, like... They can, like, send messages through the light system, they can walk... This is my favorite, they can walk in one bush and exit another, like, it's, it's real cool. <laughs> but they're also neutral, like, they don't get involved in stuff. Mm -hmm. Dane and Billy find out that by somebody stealing this kraken they have triggered the apocalypse and it's not the apocalypse that was meant to happen sometime in the future it is just the apocalypse and it is now and it is coming and it is imminent and nobody can see a way around it so they have to figure out who stole the squid and how to stop the apocalypse so they go on the run meanwhile you've got marge who is leon billy's friend who got eaten by goss and Subi. She's like, oh my god, Leon is gone, and like nobody seems to care. So she starts digging into the the London underground and the magical world. And it very much reminds me of I can't remember her name right now, but the girl in Love Grossman's The Magicians, who like kind of is rejected from the magical world and then takes her own way, kind of to find out how to do magic. So she's very much kind of like her. And so she's like wandering, trying to figure out what's going on, trying to get information from people and visiting these secret pockets of London. She has a run-in with Goss and Subby. Just two. And they're terrifying. <laughs> the first one is rough because it's in a public place and like people come up to try and like help her and he just like scares them off. And like like he, they took one, they take one look at him and they're like... And so they're just standing, people are standing and watching like Marge be like 
harass. harass. <laughs> and so then she decides that she needs to go get protection, which introduces one of my favorite side characters, which is her iPod. <laughs> <laughs> little protective charm thing where she feeds it music and it'll like protect her. It's and, cute. <laughs> and so all of the music she puts into the iPod, instead of it playing, the little like creature in the iPod sings the songs <laughs> to her. like sings them. <laughs> it's adorable. It's really cute, but she's warned that it's not gonna stop Gus and Subi. Like, nope. no, 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 no. <laughs> Meanwhile, Billy and Dane are on their adventure. They're talking to people. Two of my favorite characters are Wati, who's an Egyptian... Uh, he's a Shanti. Yeah. Um, and he's basically organizing a labor union for all of, like the magical familiars in the city and he's got them organized and like they're on strike right now so he's trying to deal with the strike and help Dano. The cool thing about him is he doesn't like have a body he just like moves from like statues and stuff like that and so he can kind of go anywhere as long as there's like figures around. I think one of the best chapters in the book is like his backstory chapter where it talks about how he came to be and how he was in the F the underworld and how he just kind of like made his way out of the underworld and started his labor union. <laughs> <laughs> it's really adorable. And then the tattoo starts like messing with his strikes and starts breaking the strikes and like murdering the familiars on strike. Because tattoo has decided that Everybody wants the squid, so I want the squid too. And I'm gonna get it any way possible. So he sets like Goss and Subi out looking for Dane and Billy, and then he sends like all the like free freelance murder groups out to look for Dane. And, and are there so many freelance murder groups? <laughs> there is a whole variety, but the two ones that like really stick out in my head are the Chaos Nazis. Yep. Which are like raver Nazis, like raver reaver Nazis. They, they, they feel like something that you would come across on like Dirk Gently. Yeah, they're just weird. They're weird, and then there are the gun farmers where like their bullets are gun eggs, and they shoot you, and then the baby gun hatches. <laughs> It's so weird. It's so weird. But it makes sense. And they're almost like a religious yeah. order at the same time. Like, they're very, like, pray about it. Like, it's holy almost what they're doing. And their guns appreciate them because they plant their eggs. Yep, that makes, that checks out. Uh-huh. So Billy and Dane are just going around trying to find the squid and what happened to the squid. And they, like, hey, maybe someone folded up the tank. Like, move the tank. And so they find the guy who can fold stuff up like origami. And they realize, like, he's the guy who sent Gus and Subby after... Billy. It, after Billy in the package. And so then they end up running into a guy who can teleport, but every time he teleports, he dies. Like, if he teleports himself. <laughs> yeah, he dies. And so, like, all of his molecules come back together to be a new version of him, and he's being haunted by all of the previous mm -hmm. versions of himself <laughs> who have died, and he's kind of addicted to it. It's weird. It's so funny. But he's also obsessed with Star Trek and his magic works like Star Trek. He has like a like a phaser, like an actual like Star Trek phaser that works that Billy ends up stealing. Which was so much fun. <laughs> so all of this is going on and then you find out what actually is happening. And so a long time ago, like probably 10 or so years ago, there was a wizard named Grizzamentum and he was the tattoo's biggest rival when the tattoo was a person. And nobody remembers his actual name. Yeah, because Grizzamentum made the tattoo into the tattoo and tattooed the tattoo on the back of this guy. This random poor this guy. This random poor guy who became, whose life was ruined by the tattoo. So Grizzamentum is sick and he's dying and magic isn't working and he contacts a whole bunch of different people to try and find a way to save him and nothing works. And so he accepts death gracefully. He has a huge funeral. He's lit on fire and everybody goes and watches Grizzamentum die and he's gone. And what is the city going to be like without Grizzamentum? Well, it was kind of a ruse. He burned his body, but his essence was made into ink. Like the ashes from the fire is ground up into ink. And then so one of his like his lead hench person who's in love with him can communicate with him by writing letters. And so now they're trying to steal the squid to mix the magical squid god ink with the grizzamentum ink and he can rewrite reality. And like just become like the ultimate being. Yes, like he can make himself the god and change the world. And so now everybody has to get the squid away from Grizzamentum before Grizzamentum can find the squid and rewrite reality. And <laughs> you're like, this is it, this is the apocalypse, let's go. <laughs> um, so it turns out the London Mancers had stolen the squid and now that they're trying to keep 
the squid away from Grismentum, they kind of have to lure him into a trap. So they do that, and it mostly works, and like Grismentum kind of almost revives the squid and become, melds with it, but then Billy is able to like mind fuck with him. Because he's like, it's not a god, it is literally a squid in a jar. And it's kind of whatever you believe becomes reality. Like and that's kind of how this world works. And so Grismentum is no, not gaining the power, and they pour bleach into his ink <laughs> and, and he kill dies. Him. Whoops! But then, because <laughs> that just seems too easy and nice, and ties everything up in a bow. Well, turns out that wasn't the apocalypse is still happening because that wasn't the apocalypse. Remember Vardy, the guy who really, really, really wanted to. Uh, Believe again. Believe again. Well, also in the London Natural History Museum, I kind of really like this, were the bottled samples that Charles Darwin made on his big, like... The Beagle the, trip. And, you know, the, the founding of the theory of evolution. Like, this is it. And so, Vardy has decided that if he uses the reality fire to burn them out of existence, Evolution will be will die, mm -hmm. and the Christian God will return. Yeah. And so Billy has to go and stop him. And so Billy like uses the Star Trek magic, but kills him. <laughs> yeah. And creates a new Billy clone <laughs> to uh to stop him. Meanwhile, Marge is having her own showdown, oh, yeah. which is so much fun. I really like this because at some point Billy and. and Dane, I guess, they find an opportunity to kidnap the tattoo, and they do! And they're like, hey, we caught the tattoo, and of course the tattoo is on this poor guy's back, and he can speak, and he can just cause a whole bunch of shit for this poor guy. So they like, cover his mouth up with tape, and the guy's like, oh, thanks. And so they're all hanging out with the London Mancers, and Chris Amentum, they have an encounter with Chris Amentum, and Chris Amentum turns to the, to the tattoo guy, and he's just like, they're not gonna let you live. Like, they're gonna kill you. You're better off on my side than, yeah. than over there. And so he makes a red port. He ends up running into Marge. It looks like he wants to escape. And then, of course, it turns out that his actions called down Goss and Zuby. And that he's lured them to their position. So Goss and Zuby show up and he's cornered by Goss and Zuby. And he's like, hey, I was looking for you and I've been trying to get back to you guys. But, you know, I've had to go a roundabout way. But, you know, you're looking for Billy and I've got his uh, friend here. So, you know, you can have her. And, and Goss is like, really? And Marge is like screaming and trying to get away. So this turns out to be a super clever ruse. This is the only way that he can separate Goss and Zuby from one another. Because Goss is always like... When he believes he's safe and he's got the upper hand, he'll let Subi go away from mm -hmm. him because Subi doesn't do much, Subi doesn't participate in much, he's just kind of a doll, so he kind of like will like send him away with somebody or just like put him to the side when he's like torturing someone. With all his attention focused on Marge, Subi is now vulnerable. <laughs> and he shoots him. And so then you find out that Subi is actually a container for Goss's heart and like soul and all that good stuff and by killing him he kills Goss and there's this like line where it's like everyone like throughout time when he dies has a moment of like true peace like everyone who's like oppressed or being bullied or being like tortured, tortured has a moment of peace because they're gone. Yeah. You're not exactly sure what he is, but he, he was like, kind of like an incarnation. Yeah, one of the theories online is he's just like an incarnation of this like maliciousness. Okay, so we've explained all of that, but the thing is that's like two thirds of the book. <laughs> like there's a bunch of stuff we, we missed. Or had to gloss over. Or had over. to gloss over, like how Billy's not actually a prophet of the Kraken, he's a prophet of bottles. <laughs> because at a party one time with all of the academics, he told everyone they were playing two truths and a lie, and he told everyone that he was a test tube baby, <laughs> like the first ever test tube baby, and the spirit of the museum overheard this and was like, I have waited. <laughs> this is my person. <laughs> so he has a guardian angel who's made out of like museum pieces and bottles that follows him around who like every time it gets destroyed progressively gets smaller. I love that thing. To tell you all the little things that happen would make it like absolutely just like, you'd be like, I have no idea what's happening. This is definitely a book that is good for multiple reads. Mm -hmm. Like the second time around, one, I realized exactly how weird it was because I wasn't exhausted, but two, it was things clicked better. Yeah. Yeah. 
when I was first reading it, I'm like, okay, this is slow, and then this is weird, and then, like, I just need to get through this. But, like, after I got through it, and the more space I had from it, the more I enjoy it. But, like, to, to try, I don't even bother trying to explain this book to people. It's like, ugh. Just here. Just try. It would like make a really good show if it, it was would. done properly. Like I would watch the shit out of this. It's it's good. It's interesting, it's different, and it's something you're not going to forget because it is just so off the wall. That is our review of Kraken by China Mieville. And uh, let us know if you've read this book and what you kinda think about it. Hey, bye guys!